Can SpaceX's Crew Dragon go to the moon? It's a question that's been coming up more and more, especially as people look for alternatives to NASA's extremely costly Orion slash SLS system. When experts took a closer look, the answers turned out to be more surprising than expected. So, could this be a viable path to the moon? Let's find out. Currently, two space transportation systems are being developed for human exploration of the moon and Mars. The first is NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, combined with the Orion spacecraft. The second is SpaceX's Starship. But at this point, there are no secrets about the problems with the first system, both in terms of cost and performance. The Orion spacecraft is far less capable than it should be. It's overweight, especially compared to newer, more efficient designs. Its launch abort system adds even more weight, and its service module propulsion system is underpowered. On top of that, Orion lands in the ocean, which means expensive and complicated recovery operations. According to a report by NASA's Inspector General, the cost of launching SLS is at least $4.2 billion for each of the first four Artemis missions. Add another $1 billion for the Orion spacecraft, and you're looking at $5.2 billion per launch. That's when people started seriously considering alternatives like SpaceX's Dragon. NASA awarded SpaceX the contract that led to the Dragon crewed spacecraft back in 2014. More than a decade later, it's still flying astronauts into orbit. What SpaceX proved is that a focused, well-led private company can deliver results that used to require entire governments. And they did it in a fraction of the time and at a fraction of the cost. Even more impressive, their Falcon rockets are reusable, something once thought impossible. So the big question now is, could Dragon actually replace Orion for moon missions? Some experts say yes. One of them is Dr. Robert Zubrin, founder of the Mars Society and president of Pioneer Astronautics. According to Zubrin, Dragon is not just cheaper than Orion. It is much better because it is much lighter. The Dragon has a mass of 9.5 tons compared to Orion's 26.5 tons. Orion could have been designed lighter, but NASA has received so many conflicting directives from successive administrations. Weighing only 20% more than the Apollo capsule, it has 50% more internal space, making it more than large enough. Not only that, we wouldn't need to wait or pay for an SLS to get it there. So how exactly do we use Dragon to get to the moon? Within the Artemis program, the SLS rocket and Orion capsule are designed to carry four astronauts from Earth to near rectilinear halo orbit around the moon and then back to Earth. So if we're looking for a minimal alternative, the goal is to replicate that same end-to-end -end functionality, just without the SLS and Orion stack. One concept is to swap out those systems with commercially available options. Use SpaceX's Crew Dragon to carry the crew between Earth and low Earth orbit, then use an orbital transfer vehicle to get them from LEO to NRHO and back. Rather than designing a brand new OTV, which would take a lot of time, money, and risk, the idea is to reuse hardware that's already being developed. Specifically, a second instance of SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System, HLS. This Starship wouldn't land on the moon, but instead serve as a crewed space tug between Earth orbit and lunar orbit. One challenge with this plan is that Crew Dragon would need to remain in low Earth orbit for several days while waiting for the crew to return from the moon. There are a few ways to deal with this. One option is to simply fly two Crew Dragons, one to bring the crew from Earth to LEO, and a second to bring them back. This uses existing hardware and avoids any design changes, but it's obviously more expensive. Another approach is to modify Crew Dragon to support long-duration uncrewed loitering in orbit. That would allow the same vehicle to stay in LEO and wait for the crew's return. But modifying a human-rated spacecraft could introduce delays and added complexity to the schedule. A third option is to launch a third starship, another HLS, this time repurposed as a Crew Loitering Depot CLD. In this scenario, Dragon docks to the CLD in LEO, and the depot provides power, thermal control, and life support while Dragon sits idle. Even the most brute force option, flying two Crew Dragons, is almost certainly cheaper and less complex than continuing with the SLS and Orion stack, both in terms of cost and logistics. Another simple approach is to start with launching the crew aboard SpaceX's Crew Dragon, as usual. 
Once in low Earth orbit, the astronauts would transfer from Dragon to the human landing system version of Starship. At that point, you may as well ride Starship all the way. It's going where you want to go anyway. From there, Starship heads directly to the lunar surface, skipping the current Artemis approach of rendezvousing with a space station or docking with other elements in near-rectilinear halo orbit around the moon. After the surface mission, Starship would ascend into a relatively low lunar orbit, which could reduce the number of in-space refueling flights needed and free up other Starships for practical missions, like launching Starlink satellites or other payloads. In lunar orbit, Starship would dock with a return vehicle, a modified Crew Dragon launched earlier by a Falcon Heavy rocket. While Falcon Heavy isn't currently human-rated, that doesn't matter here. This return vehicle launches uncrewed, so there's no need for a launch abort system or full human rating certification. Falcon Heavy has enough performance, Delta V, to push Dragon into translunar injection and onboard propulsion using hypergolic thrusters like the Super Dracos in Dragon's trunk can handle the remaining burns, circularizing into low lunar orbit, docking with Starship, and performing the trans-Earth injection burn to head back to Earth. Life support only needs to sustain two astronauts for a few days, which is well within Dragon's capabilities. It's a straightforward, cost-effective plan that leans on hardware that already exists or is in development, while cutting out much of the complexity of the current Artemis architecture. Now, what if SpaceX's Starship isn't in the picture? As we know, Artemis 3 is slated to return humans to the moon in 2027, but Starship's development only recently regained momentum after several failures earlier this year. In this context, Dr. Robert Zubrin steps in with an alternative moon mission plan that relies solely on Crew Dragon, a Falcon 9, and a Falcon Heavy rocket. The basic idea is to launch the crew into low Earth orbit, LEO, aboard Dragon using a Falcon 9. Then, a Falcon Heavy is launched separately with a fully fueled upper stage. After reaching orbit, the Falcon Heavy's upper stage, still carrying plenty of propellant, rendezvouses and docks with the Dragon. The Falcon Heavy upper stage then performs translunar injection, sending Dragon toward the Moon. It can also handle lunar orbit capture and trans Earth injection, the burns needed to enter lunar orbit and return to Earth, respectively. There are two ways to do this. Option 1 uses just Dragon and the Falcon Heavy upper stage. The Falcon Heavy is launched without a payload, so in LEO, the upper stage has a dry mass of 10 tons and 65 tons of propellant. After docking with Dragon, which has a dry mass of 9.5 tons, the combined spacecraft weighs 84.5 tons total, with a dry mass of 19.5 tons. This gives a mass ratio, total mass divided by dry mass, of 4.33. Using Falcon Heavy's exhaust velocity of 3.41 km per second, this translates to a total delta V capability of about 5.0 km per second. Since TLI requires roughly 3.1 km per second, that leaves 1.9 km per second for both LOC and TEI, about 0.95 km per second each, enough to safely orbit the moon and return. Option 2 adds a small propulsion stage, SPS, to the mix. Falcon Heavy launches with the SPS as payload. The SPS carries 7.9 tons of liquid oxygen slash methane propellant and has a dry mass of 1.5 tons. Together with Dragon, this assembly weighs 18.9 tons, with a mass ratio of 1.717 and a delta V capability of about 2 kilometers per second, enough for LOC and TEI. Meanwhile, the Falcon Heavy upper stage reaches orbit carrying 10 tons dry mass, 9.4 tons of SPS mass, and 55.6 tons of propellant. After docking with Dragon, the total mass is 84.5 tons, with 55.6 tons of propellant left in the upper stage to perform TLI. This gives a mass ratio of 2.92 and a delta V of 3.65 km per second for the TLI burn, 0.55 km per second more than the required 3.1 km per second, providing a comfortable margin. Zubrin points out that this design is flexible enough to allow for less efficient propellants like LOX slash RP-1 or NTO slash MMH in the SPS without losing mission feasibility, though with reduced margin. Travel to the moon and back takes at least six days. Zubrin says Crew Dragon can handle that duration comfortably. If you wanted to add an extra 10 days of endurance, consider oxygen consumption. One crew member uses roughly one kilogram of oxygen per day. For two crew members, over 10 days, that's 
20 kilograms of oxygen, stored as compressed gas at 3,000 psi, similar to scuba tanks, which requires just 0.075 cubic meters of volume. Since Dragon's internal volume is 9.3 cubic meters, less than 1% of the available space would be needed for the extra oxygen tanks, making extended missions quite feasible. This mission is essentially equivalent to Apollo 8, which is why Zubrin calls it Artemis 8. While all these plans have their own advantages and disadvantages, they all come down to one key issue. Sending Crew Dragon to the moon would require a ton of modifications. Traveling beyond low Earth orbit would mean making some substantial, but still doable, changes to the spacecraft. Even if you focus only on adapting the capsule itself, and not the propulsion needed to get to the moon and back, there are still several challenges. For starters, Dragon's communication system uses GPS which doesn't work beyond Earth orbit, so it would need a whole new communications and navigation setup. Radiation is another issue. Protecting astronauts isn't too difficult, but hardening the electronics would take some work. There's also the issue of free flight time, basically how long Dragon can operate on its own without being docked to a space station or platform like the ISS or the Lunar Gateway. In the document, Development of the Crew Dragon ECLSS Stage, the derived requirement is approximately five days of free flight for the worst case. Given a crew size of four, this means that the ECLSS consumables must last for 20 person days using conservatively high metabolic loads and conservatively low efficiency of utilizing each consumable. No additional safety factor is applied since each input to the consumables analysis is worst case. There's some info that suggests Dragon might be able to go 7 to 10 days max, but that still might not be enough to qualify as a proper lunar spacecraft. For comparison, Apollo was rated for 14 days, and Orion can do 21. Some Apollo missions lasted between 8 and 12.5 days. So Dragon could technically fit into that range, but with very little room for error. To make it work, life support and consumables like oxygen, water, and CO2 scrubbers would all need to be expanded. That means more weight and more space taken up inside the capsule. Dragon has 9.3 cubic meters of internal volume, less than Orion's 20, but more than Apollo's 6.2, so it's cramped, but not impossible for missions of that length. It'd be a lot more manageable if there were something like the Lunar Gateway to dock with, so Dragon wouldn't have to run solo the whole time. Other required upgrades include enhanced radiation shielding to protect astronauts from solar flares and cosmic rays outside Earth's magnetosphere. This would almost certainly add weight and further reduce usable space. Reentry is another critical issue. Returning from the moon means hitting Earth's atmosphere at around 11 kilometers per second, far faster than reentry from LEO. This would likely require upgrades or replacement of Crew Dragon's Pika X heat shield to survive lunar return velocities. Finally, while upgrades to communications and navigation for deep space operations are relatively straightforward compared to life support or thermal protection, they still require changes. In the end, retrofitting Crew Dragon for lunar missions could be feasible, especially if supported by infrastructure like the Lunar Gateway but it would involve substantial redesigns and trade-offs in crew safety margins, comfort, and overall mission complexity.